Hi folks, welcome to another Sugar High News Flash. I'm PA David, I'm a board certified and licensed diabetes specialty PA practicing in Southern California. And as always, Sugar High is your channel for relatable and reliable diabetes information that's always easy to understand. These news flashes are shorter videos that discuss new developments in diabetes management or interesting new findings as they come up. Today's video is gonna discuss the findings of a recent study that I found very interesting and I thought you guys would also be curious to hear about it. But because of the fact that it pertains to COVID-19 and there's so much misinformation out there about coronavirus, I wanna be really clear about what the purpose of this video is. This is not medical advice or me telling any of my viewers that they should do anything in particular in terms of medication or treatment of COVID-19. This is just us discussing interesting findings of a recent study, and I'd encourage everyone watching to follow the directions of their own healthcare providers only, and don't make any healthcare-related decisions based on any YouTube videos, my videos, or anyone else's for that matter. Also, please keep in mind that the landscape of the current pandemic is rapidly changing, and we're learning more and more each day which means that this is gonna be one of those videos where the relevance or the meaningfulness may change or even decrease as time goes by. For reference, I'm recording this on March 21st, 2021, and uh, we're gonna be talking about an article that was published in mid-January. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about this study. An article was recently published in the Journal of Frontiers in Endocrinology that reported the findings of a study conducted at the University of Alabama at Birmingham Hospital. The idea behind this study was that they reviewed anonymous medical records from over 25,000 different people tested for COVID-19 over a four month period of time. And it looked for certain factors to determine commonalities between people who survived and people who passed away from the infection. They looked at all sorts of different characteristics like age, race, male versus female, whether or not people had obesity, whether or not they had high blood pressure, and whether or not they had diabetes, both type one and two diabetes. Amongst the people who were type two diabetic, they also looked to see whether there was any difference in people who were taking insulin versus those who were not on insulin, as well as people who were taking metformin at the time of diagnosis compared to those who were not on metformin. The results of this analysis were pretty interesting because in terms of diabetes, there were two things that were observed. Number one, the findings of the study supported the idea that being diabetic is an independent risk factor for death in cases of COVID-19. That's not really a surprise. We kind of already knew that. But what was really quite interesting was that the group of people diagnosed with COVID-19 that were taking metformin were three times less likely to die than those people who were not taking metformin when diagnosed. These findings were consistent in both men and women amongst different age groups and amongst people of different races. This was not the first study to suggest that metformin may have a protective effect from COVID-19 related deaths, but it was one of the first studies that actually included a nicely diverse patient population. So that's all very interesting, but what does it mean? Does it mean that metformin protects diabetic people from death during COVID-19 infections? Well, we don't really know. This was a retrospective study, which means that it looked back on things that had already happened. And that's very different from a clinical trial that's prospective, meaning they take a bunch of diabetic people, give half of them metformin, and the other half get either placebo or some other kind of standard of care medication, and then track them moving forward to see if there's any difference between the two groups. In healthcare, we don't say that anything has a proven protective effect unless we have that type of prospective clinical trial data. This type of retrospective study is designed to generate more questions than answers. It's the kind of thing that makes us go, huh, we should study that further. We should look at this a little bit more closely. That's kind of interesting. Let's study that more. Now, there are a lot of things that could explain the findings of this study. One possibility is that sure, maybe metformin has some sort of effect that decreases the chance of dying when infected with COVID-19. We already know that metformin has anti-inflammatory and anti-blood clotting properties. 
Severe COVID-19 infections are a highly inflammatory process and people with severe COVID-19 have a greater risk of forming blood clots. So if there's some sort of effective metformin that's interrupting all that, that might be a source of improved likelihood of survival. However, some other diabetes medications like SGLT2 inhibitors like Jardiance or Farxiga or Inovolcana also have anti-inflammatory properties, so wouldn't they also bring about the same type of effect? Well, unfortunately, we don't really know because in this study, there were not enough people who were on those medications to get any sort of statistically significant analysis for those medication types. But the idea that metformin is directly bringing about a decrease in risk of dying from COVID-19 is not the only explanation for the findings of this study. It's been proposed that maybe diabetic people who aren't taking metformin might be generally sicker and more vulnerable and therefore more likely to die than those who are taking metformin. Here's what I mean by that. Generally, metformin is one of the first medications that we start for type two diabetes. If somebody's diabetes progresses and their general health starts to worsen, sometimes we have to take them off metformin. A person with severe diabetic chronic kidney disease, for example, would not be able to continue metformin. That person with advanced kidney disease is much more vulnerable than a recently diagnosed diabetic who's only been on metformin for a few months. So what does this study tell us? It tells us that we still have more to learn, but the effect of metformin on people with type two diabetes who are battling COVID-19 is definitely worth looking into. It doesn't prove anything one way or the other, and it certainly doesn't mean that you should go out and start metformin unless your healthcare provider has directly advised you to do so. But either way, it's information that I definitely found interesting, and I thought that you might as well. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to Sugar High, I hope that you'll check out the channel and consider subscribing. Thanks again for tuning in to this Sugar High News Flash, and I will see you guys again in the next video.